The opening reading I have today is called The Ninth Obstacle. It was written by Laura Solomon, the clergy intern at the Washington Ethical Society in Washington, D.C. And she is a Master of Divinity student at Meadville Lombard Theological School. While it's true we are not being called to war, it is also true that these are challenging times. I would argue that some of us are being called to do far more than sit on our couch. Most of us, in fact. All of us, probably. I understand this meme. We need humor. We need to poke fun at this extraordinary situation, and it's healthy to do so. But we also need to be extraordinarily gentle with one another. Excessively gentle. Tender, even. Some of us are being called to serve vulnerable communities. Some of us are being called to provide comfort, care, and support in new challenging ways. Some of us are medical professionals and first responders taking risks. Some of us are accompanying the dying. Some of us are holding the fragile mental health of children and adults. Some of us are scared for ourselves or our children or for our parents. Some of us are out of work. Some of us don't know how we will pay our rent. Some of us are uninsured and scared. Some of us will need to know how we will spend days at home entertaining children, which presents myriad challenges for our own mental health or our child's mental health. None of us is unaffected. Years ago, I did one of those mud run obstacle races. I didn't struggle much with the actual physical obstacles or the mud, but I had a moment of utter panic when I realized I had to change my clothes in a big tent where there was no privacy. My, fr my friend had her moment of struggle when we were in line and she had no choice but to wait patiently. My biggest learning was that while there were eight physical obstacles on the course, we all had a ninth obstacle. That's kind of what's happening right now. COVID-19 has imposed eight obstacles that we're all contending with, but we each have nine or more obstacles. You have no idea what anyone else's ninth obstacle or 10th or 11th is. You just know they have it. We have no choice but to be gentle, excessively, generously, powerfully gentle. Spirit of life, help us remember to hold ourselves and each other with tenderness and grace. As we meet each new obstacle, let us take three gentle breaths. One for ourselves, one for our loved ones, and one for the world. And now I hand over to our own Reverend G. Ludwig McCartney for their words of wisdom. Good morning. Um, thank you, Nancy. You just took us to church. I don't know that I really need to add anything to this one. Um, good morning and welcome. If you're only joining now, I'm Reverend G, Minister at the Unitarian Universalist Community Church. And uh, I love it that you chose to join us this morning. Um, a few years ago, this was at the, and there, there comes Church of the Holy Living Room. Um, a few years ago, Patty and I, Patty's my wife, um, helped Patty's daughter, Sarah, move down to Austin, Texas. And um, we packed a van and a trailer, and then off we went. And it was a very, very long drive. Um, our relationship was still very young. It was our first road trip together. And um, we were listening to books on tapes. We packed food. We still talk about the watermelon. It was the best we've ever had. And um, we learned that we travel well together. So that was a boon. 
we also figured it out very soon that this is a very, very long trip. And we were not very big fans of it. All that sitting, all that driving, all the way to Austin, Texas, it's a long, long, long drive. Um, we spent two nights in a hotel and um, we even had a flat tire in Dallas. We dealt with that as well. Um, luckily we had the flat, flat tire and we looked around, where are we? And there was a discount tire. So it was a very lucky accident. It got fixed easily, fast, relatively fast, and we were on the road again. Um, but the trip, even though we enjoyed the books on tapes, even though we learned that we traveled really well together, we enjoyed each other's company. It was arduous. We just did not like it. All that sitting was hard on our body. If you've been on a long road trip, I, I think you know what I'm talking about. So then the third day, um, we took off and we're driving and now we're getting really close to Austin. And I'm sick and tired of all the driving, of this road tripping. And this is what I notice inside myself. I don't want to get there. I want to keep on driving. I really don't want to have to deal with the change of scenery. I knew that when we would get there, we would be united with other people, such as Sarah, her daughter, and there was a larger group that was traveling, so we would all come together. Now we have to interact with each other. Then we have to unpack the van and the trailer. And it's just the whole dynamics is now changing. And even though I didn't like, I didn't love at all being in that van driving, I wanted even less for that to change. And that taught me a lesson about inertia and about human inclination or character or preferences. It's we are weird beings. Although we may not like or not love the circumstance that we are in, change is still hard and we tend to be slow to embrace it. Now, I, I'm certain that this shows up in degrees in us human beings. Some people are very quick to embrace change. Then there are the rest of us every running the gamut. And some of us are extremely low um, and very unlikely and very resisting change. So it's a, it's a continuum, it's a spectrum. And, and we run the gamut, but we are weird like that. And you know that because you've stayed in dead end jobs. You know that because you put up with relationships that weren't working for you. Um, you've even stayed in friendships that no longer served you or maybe were abusive or unkind. Um, you went to meetings that, that you didn't want to because change was so difficult. So there's that inertia. Well, here we are and we're coming, maybe, I think, we're coming out of this COVID um, pandemic. And I'm not saying that with certainty. So I am, I am not saying that, um, please don't go and say, Reverend G, I heard her on, she was on live stream and she said the pandemic is over. That is not what I am saying. There is a shift in the pandemic. And in this country, the cases are going down. There's fewer deaths. And we're so grateful for that. And the economy is opening back up. And the world is opening back up. And now uh, the officials are telling us that we don't have to wear a mask if we have been fully vaccinated, that we can go back to living like we did before the pandemic entered our reality. It's a shift, it's a change. And so I invite you to just look at and go within and see how that is affecting you. 
all the, what is that bringing up in you? Are you ready for this? Even though you didn't like wearing a mask, are you ready, ready to let go of that mask? Yesterday I attended a wedding and I, I officiated a wedding. And uh, so there were people there that I have never met. And uh, afterwards they came up to me and they held out their hands to shake mine. And well, every single time I had to think about it. Before, if somebody extended a hand to me, I would just shake it. I wouldn't have a second thought about it. And yesterday there I was thinking like, I'm not comfortable with this. I don't know where those hands have been. I don't know what's on those hands. And should I be shaking it? And I shook them. I shook them because just like after the Spanish flu, humanity went back to living like they did before, I suspect that we're going to do that again um, because we're weird people. Change is hard, but then once we change, we also forget we are weird people. Um, I titled my talk, Are We There Yet? Are we there yet? Because invariably now and last week, um, we had a meeting within our congregation to talk about the future plans. How much longer are we meeting online? Are we opening up for meetings in person? What does that look like? Um, the nitty gritty, figuring it out. Where are we? Where is our comfort level? Where is our confidence level? That, that the messaging that is coming out from the CDC and the government, is it any more trustworthy than it was a year ago, two years ago? Um, so, we had this meeting and I titled my talk, Are We There Yet? Because that's what we want to know. The mind likes to deal with certainties. I know what I know and that's the way it is. And if I know it, then that's the way it is. Uncertainty for the mind is not a comfortable place. The mind perceives that as a vacuum. It's a vacuum of information. It's the I don't know. And it wants to fill it in with something certain. It's just natural human tendency. So are we there yet? Well, let's talk about that. The natural question is, are we there yet to open up and return to life as it was before COVID? Can we trust now? Can we return to life in general to the way it was before the pandemic? And I want to ask the question also, why is it important to have a definitive answer? If I told you here and now that yes, we are there, we are going to open up, we're going to return in person, it is going to be exactly like it was before the pandemic. And then, a day after tomorrow, you turn on the news and you find out that, wow, there's a new strain and it's worse than before. And in fact, we're shutting back down. Then, what about the information that I give you today that yes, we're there. So you see, it's about the process. It is about paying attention and it is about growing in resilience. Certainty, very little in life is certain. In fact, most things are completely uncertain. And for us human beings, to find a level of comfort is difficult in the midst of uncertainty. And yet, that is the secret to peace, peace of mind, and resilient, um, grounded living. Are we there yet? We've always been there. 
We've always been the beloved community. We've always taken care of each other. And through this pandemic, we have found that we can still dig deeper and can be there for each other even more in ways that was not known to us before. Are we there yet? What if we've always been there? What if the ways we need to come together, the ways we commune with each other, the ways we live into this beloved community has always been established. It shows up in different ways because of circumstances, but the love has always been there. The commitment has always been there. The willingness to participate in this beloved community, to expand it, to make it better, to serve through it, with it, has always been there. What, is, what if we have always been there? We are thinking right now that in September, we are going to offer hybrid services. We have clarity that we are always going to have a very robust online experience. And we are thinking that in September, we're going to start having in-person gatherings in our actual physical building, which is on Shaver Road in Portage. Is that true? Life will show us. This is what we are thinking. And then we are willing to adapt because through this pandemic, we have learned that our ability to adapt is incredible. We have showed up in ways for each other and for the larger community because we're adaptable, because we have a commitment and a love that we take seriously and we follow through with. So that's what we think, that we are going to come together in September, in person, and we will make announcements. We will let you know ahead of time. And if you haven't received an announcement, then contact us. We will be happy to share with you. Are we there yet? What if we always have been? The pandemic changed life, changed the, changed the way we need to relate and live life right now. But the base, the foundation, has always been there. And if anything, through this, this pandemic, we just got closer and honed it in even more, that which is truly important for us, and that is connection in any way we can get it. Certainty is something we want, and a certainty is something we can seldomly get. So we might as well let go of the need of certainty and get comfortable with the unknown, allowing for that which shows up and paying attention and honoring the inertia that we are so prone to and then recognize what is this inertia? How much of my unwillingness to step back into life is actual inertia that I can overcome and it's my job to overcome? And how much is it? How much is based in science, in facts and in reality? We are called to live paying attention, caring for each other, for ourselves. And I would like to close with one of my possibly most favorite quotes by Pima Children, and this is one of my all-time favorite quotes, because for me, it sums up life succinctly and perfectly. Things 
falling apart is a kind of testing and also a kind of healing. We think that the point is to pass the test or to overcome the problem. But the truth is that things don't really get solved. They come together and they fall apart. Then they come together again and fall apart again. It's just like that. The healing comes from letting there be room for all of this to happen. Room for grief, room for relief, for misery, for joy. And so it is. <laughs>